Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. And this is live on the power cam. Let's go, man. This guy is crazy. Oh, boy. Get off the ground. 10-0, 10-0. From around the world. And across the country. He's in the woods. From your own backyard. <laughs> this is the reality of law enforcement today. Look at that. Come on. For the next 60 minutes, look out, look out, look out. you'll be a witness. Shut your truck off. You'll see everything an officer sees. Negative, negative. The fastest pursuits. The scariest shootouts. The most extreme and unusual crimes. I need some help ever captured on video. Police and news gathering agencies around the world have sent us this footage. Because they want you to see for yourself the insanity of criminal behavior. Because only when you've seen how it happens and why it happens can you make sure it doesn't happen to you. Sheriff John Bunnell, crime never sleeps. Police officers work 24 seven to keep our streets safe, but it's a tough job. And tonight you'll see why. You'll see the blood, sweat and tear that goes into bringing the bad guys down. So keep your eyes open. You won't want to miss a thing. Hego Harbor, Michigan. Officers attempt to pull over a motorcycle that has expired tags. The driver's been in trouble with the law many times before. But he doesn't seem to have learned his lesson. Has a motorcycle. He throws his V4 engine into high gear, able to make zero to 100 in under 10 seconds. Not to mention turn on a dime. Even the super equipped patrol car has a tough time keeping up. Once on the open expressway, the suspect throttles his machine up to 100 miles an hour. In five seconds flat, he's just a speck on the horizon. Five seconds after that, he's out of sight. But the man has to slow down when other motorists get in his way. And cross traffic is too heavy to blow the light. The officers try to convince him to surrender. Pull it over. Right now, pull it over. But this guy isn't smart enough to give up, and that makes him dangerous. The officers go through the gauntlet, trying to catch up with him. Soon, the pursuit rumbles past cars, heading onto an on-ramp. The sun is setting, and the officers know that as they lose visibility, this pursuit will become a lot more dangerous. The suspect tries to shake the officers by exiting in a construction zone. The bike handles the rough road well. But it nearly gets dumped when the driver takes the ramp too quickly. A non-coming unit tries to intimidate the suspect. But he blows right past him. The officers realize it's time to take off the gloves. Finally, they catch up with them at a busy intersection. They know this could be their only shot. So they make it count. The biker had to hesitate for a passing car, and that's when he got a nudge. When he tries to take off again, the nudge becomes a shot. The suspect immediately leaps to his feet, angry but uninjured. It's a safer end to this chase than a high-speed wipeout would have been. But he'll still have to face charges of fleeing and eluding, which recently became a felony in the state of Michigan. For just one expired registration, this biker ran officers ragged. So for what he didn't pay in registration fees, he's now paying for with jail time. 
Tyler, Texas. Troopers have stopped the speeding car. While the driver's being ticketed, the trooper on the right questions the nervous passenger. What the officer doesn't know is that the passenger is an escaped convict from an Alabama prison. Not surprisingly, the escapee balks at the officer's request for ID. It's against law for you not to do what I told you to do. Come on out here. When the passenger keeps stalling, the trooper gets serious. We can do it the easy way or we can do it the hard way. Which way do you want to go? Suddenly, the cornered criminal jams a pistol into the officer's neck. Don't, don't move. Oh, don't move, man. Don't move. What happens next takes just a few seconds, but will seem like an eternity. The trooper grabs his own gun. Don't move. The suspect fires at the trooper, and there's a hail of bullets. So much happens in these few seconds, it takes slow motion to see it all. As the other officer steps backward, Don't move. the first trooper wrenches his own gun from its holster. The suspect fires at the officer point blank and barely misses. As the armed convict runs away, the trooper returns fire. Hours later, the trigger-happy felon is caught in the woods nearby. Amazingly, although the suspect's jacket had three bullet holes, the fugitive wasn't hit once. But that was the last of this gunman's good luck. At his trial, this suspect tried to represent himself. The defendant slash defender ignores the judge's advice to drop himself as a client. And it is ill-advised for you to represent yourself. But when he ignores proper courtroom procedure, he gets a stern reprimand. The court has sent the jury out so that you would not be prejudiced by the remarks on the I've been prejudiced already, Your Honor. The man stood Excuse up Excuse me, but the... I haven't asked you for a remark. Although he pleaded not guilty, this lame legal eagle makes a confession. I admitted to holding a gun on the BPS official. It's all the jury needs to hear. They send this career criminal into early retirement. He's sentenced to life in prison. This jailbird's jailbreak was a bad decision. It's law for you not to do what I told you to do. Pulling a gun on a trooper was even worse. Don't move, don't move. Fortunately, the jury showed better judgment than this lifelong crook. I admit it to hold a gun. And he'll spend decades behind bars. Excuse me, but I haven't asked you for a remark. Where all his decisions will be made for him. <laughs> Callahan, Florida. 10 minutes ago, Major Mike Hurst was casually pumping gas into his patrol car. He's currently on 95, 100 miles. Now he's pushing 100 miles an hour in pursuit of a stolen Mustang. Back at the gas station, the officer spotted the driver and passenger behaving suspiciously. On a hunch, he decided to follow them. A moment later, dispatch informed him the car was stolen. He turned on his lights, and the suspects took off like a shot. They thunder down US-1, using every scrap of road they can to get by traffic. Motorists are terrified as the Mustang tears past, slaloming around their vehicles like they're standing still. He's going into the medium, trying to pass. This isn't the type of afternoon Hurst was hoping for, but he doesn't let that slow him down. The officer does some weaving of his own to keep up with the suspects. The suspects whip through an abandoned gas station, trying to shake the officer. But he stays doggedly on their tail. Back on the highway, the driver takes the Mustang full throttle. We're at 100 miles an hour with the water Going this fast is begging for trouble. And these boys are about to find some. The suspect blew the caution light just when a motorist began to turn. They swerved in time to avoid him, but they couldn't avoid a spin-out. Skid marks tattooed the highway, a bad omen for the outcome. But Hurst is astonished to find the Mustang still on its feet. The suspects are dazed from their spin-out. But they still have plenty of fight left. A mile down the road, the chase enters another jurisdiction, Jacksonville. The officer debates whether or not to break off the chase. 
but he chooses to stay with the Mustang until Jacksonville PD can mobilize. After the suspects turn by some railroad tracks, they gun the engine and vanish into the distance. The suspects have slipped through his fingers and right into the arms of the Jacksonville PD. These car thieves thought they were making a clean getaway. But when Major Mike Hurst followed his hunch, they didn't get away with anything. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. Criminals go crazy. Oh, he's up on the sidewalk, he's up on the curb. A madman in Texas goes berserk. 115 miles an hour. A maniac in a video store goes ballistic. And a crackpot in Kentucky goes for broke. Out of their minds. Out of their element. You understand what he's saying? But definitely not out of reach. Next. Occasionally, we come across someone who has a mental illness. And although we're there to help them, if they're endangering other people, they need to be stopped. Grand Prairie, Texas. Officers get a call that a mentally disturbed man in an SUV is terrorizing children on a field trip. Officers in pursuit, very high speed uh, pursuit of this vehicle. While they're able to keep the unstable suspect from menacing helpless children, they can't keep him from bullying other drivers. He's forcing this car into the shoulder of the road. The SUV charges down the freeway at triple-digit speed. Well, this vehicle is going in excess of 115 miles an hour. The traffic thins out. Police are able to deploy spike strips in the truck's path. He's about to hit the spikes, about to go over the spikes. From behind the suspect, officers can see that the spikes have done their job. That, that white smoke that you saw means that he did hit the spike strip. The hobbled Ford plows through a median and into a parking lot. There are a number of police units just flooding in behind the suspect right now. Although police have him cornered, the suspect refuses to leave his vehicle. He's a danger as long as he can reach the gas pedal. So officers wrestle the man from behind the wheel. And the driver is now being taken into custody. This, this is all over. It's a sad end to another random crime. But at least the man can no longer harm himself or others. Terror can strike any time when you'd least expect it. And when it does, police have to react in a heartbeat and make a life and death decision. Granite City, Illinois. The quiet of a neighborhood video store is shattered when shots ring out from the parking lot. As bullets rip through the night, the crowd panics and runs screaming for the exit. A crazed gunman has gone on a wild rampage, firing randomly at strangers. Several fleeing customers can't get out in time. Instead, they find the gunman blocking the exit. Praying the insane man doesn't fire at them, they run in the other direction, charging past a terrified little girl left alone in the corner. Thankfully, one brave man rushes back to the child's aid. I don't know what to do. But before he can whisk her to safety, the good Samaritan is found by the mad gunman. This courageous man is petrified. He pleads not just for his own life, but for the life of the innocent child. The gunman's response is baffling. He stalks away, turning his attention to a female employee cowering behind the counter. Ranning like a lunatic, he leaps over and gives an order to the frightened clerk. Incredibly, in the face of paralyzing fear, this woman keeps her wits. She leads the demented man to the back of the store where she knows police can see them. When the gunman is in full view, the employee intentionally hangs back. Police open fire. The man recoils as if he's been hit, but he hasn't. The woman takes cover behind a rack of tapes. But the disturbed gunman has forgotten about her. He's now focused on the cops outside. He waves his weapon and storms through a shattered window, welcoming a brutal shootout. There is another hail of bullets.
police quickly bring this would-be killer's shooting spree to an end. Thanks to the police and the bravery of one man, <laughs> this gunman's victims all survived. Can you put down the gun? But this rampage is a grim reminder of how terror can strike at any time. Nairobi, Kenya. A storm is brewing as a former marketplace churns with angry merchants. Their market was sold to a local Muslim temple, which wants to turn it into a parking lot. Fearing for their livelihood, the merchants secured a court order to halt evictions. But this morning, they arrive horrified to find that their stalls have been bulldozed. Corrupt officials had ordered the market demolished overnight. We are not animals, OK? The atmosphere is electrified. Outraged merchants begin to unleash their anger on local Muslims. Muslims who had nothing to do with the bulldozing. But one act of violence leads to another in return. Before long, the streets are overrun by raging factions. Fearing for their safety, panicked bystanders try to evacuate the area. But they face danger at every turn. The agitators threaten to overwhelm the city. Suddenly, they're all met by arriving authorities. The police don't have time to take sides. Their job is to restore order, fast. Many in the crowd are too angry to stop fighting. But with armed personnel and tear gas, officers finally get the streets back under control. The riot left a landscape of devastation, both physical and emotional. That's why no matter who was right or wrong, police had only one objective, to bring this terrifying incident to an end as quickly as possible. Eminence, Kentucky. Police track down a convicted felon. The guy's got a three-page rap sheet, and he's fleeing in a stolen vehicle. Moments ago, the driver was feeling homesick in a bar, so he stole a car to drive back to his native California. He hasn't gotten very far when these officers mobilize from both directions to try to slow him down. But he barrels ahead through a stop sign. This police roadblock doesn't slow him down either. We need to get the two-man unit. Get this stopped. Let's get too late. Now another officer takes the lead, but this career criminal still won't pull over. After several warnings, pull the car over, stop the car. He has no choice but to force the suspect off the road. But the guy's a stubborn drunk. He veers back onto the highway, still determined to drive across the country. They've got him. Put your hands up! Put your hands up, now! Keep them up! Police push him off the road by using the pit maneuver, the pursuit intervention technique. It succeeds in getting this man off the road and back to his second home, the city jail. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. Get out, get out. Criminals in motion. A drug dealer does some ditching. A pot smoker does some shimmy. Okay, now that was real smooth. And a con artist does some skitty. They're slipping, sliding, and shaking. You realize that video camera right there? Next. Dooley County, Georgia. Moments ago, police were called to this topless bar, where a customer was openly snorting large amounts of cocaine. Although the man is sped off in his Mercedes, police are right behind him. I can't give you a tag number just yet. Wired and reckless, the brazen druggie rips down the highway. Approach 120 miles hour. But his coke-fueled euphoria comes crashing down when he starts to lose control of the car. Mercedes fishtails wildly and slams into a ditch. 
The officer advances toward the vehicle with his weapon drawn. Get out! Get out! And yanks the drugged up driver out of the car. On the ground! On the ground! Police find the evidence of the man's cocaine use under his nose. They also find half an ounce of it in his pocket. It's enough to charge him with intent to sell. A fast car and a nose full of coke made this felon think he was above the law. But instead of ditching the police, he only ditched himself. Criminals always think they're smarter than the cops. But there's a very special place for people who try to fool the law. It's called jail. Baldwin, Georgia. A policeman pulls over an SUV for expired tags. How you doing? But the minute he approaches the driver's window, it hits him. The strong stench of marijuana. The officer doesn't mention it at first. Hey, stop, you don't have a tag on the car. I know, hon. Um... He's alone on patrol this evening, and there are three people in the car. Without any backup, he has to get them out of the vehicle so we can search it. But he also has to make sure the suspects don't bolt. How much have you had to drink tonight? I didn't know I drank. The officer proceeds with caution. Take anything illegal, but guns, knives, weapons, drugs, no. contraband of any type. No. Fast with consent search, you'd have a problem with. No, that's fine. Okay. But we'll, you would just step out real fast. Okay. The police officer's laid back attitude keeps the suspects from getting suspicious, and they agree to a search. You got anything in your pocket, baby? Two young women emerge wearing skimpy outfits that would turn any man's head. But the young officer has only one concern, to do his job as thoroughly as possible. I can take a red light before you are. OK, yeah. okay. That's, that's OK. The driver is more than willing to take a DUI test. But the officer knows that a breathalyzer cannot detect the marijuana in her system. While the policeman questions the male passenger, the blonde-haired woman assures her friend that the officer will never find drugs in the car because she's got two bags of pot hidden in her jeans. The suspects are confident they've covered up any trace of drugs, but in their stone state, they overlook a discarded piece of evidence. Okay, who's sick to take this? The police officer finds a joint in an empty pack of smokes. Everybody's under arrest for possession of marijuana. The male passenger is handcuffed first. He poses the greatest physical threat to the officer. While the policeman concentrates on putting the man in the squad car, the female passenger dumps one of the bags of weed onto the ground. She successfully eases it down her pant leg and then kicks it under the cruiser. Next, the officer decides to cuff the driver. Put these on him. Again, the other female takes advantage of the distraction and tries to ditch the second baggie. Only this time, her skin-tight pants prove to be too tight. She prays the police officer will keep busy until she can get rid of the incriminating evidence. I can smell marijuana coming from the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Even though the policeman's attention is divided, it doesn't take long for him to notice her shaking and wiggling. Now, that was real smooth. Not only does he spot the dope, her cannabis calypso has been recorded on the dash cam. You realize there's a video camera right there taping you? That's when she finally sees she can't wiggle her way out of this. These pot smokers thought a pretty smile could conceal their lies. You don't have a tag on the car? I know, hon. But actions speak louder than words. And this eagle-eyed officer knew something was up when there was a whole lot of shaking going on. Fort Wentworth, Georgia. Sergeant M.B. Ferran pursues a wanted felon. Coming north. The cocky criminal just tried to pass a bad check and then ran down a security guard while getting away. Now he's racked up two more felonies on top of his outstanding warrants. And with this guy, one crime just leads to another. But on these rain-soaked roads, driving conditions are treacherous. And when the conniving ex-con tries to give police the slip, he ends up sliding right off the highway. Seeing the suspect's car in the dirt, the officer is ready to make an arrest. But the tunneled vision fugitive never considers giving up. A second officer moves in to slow this rapid racer down. From the backup unit, it's clear this driver isn't stopping for anything. Not even a 20-ton big rig. The suspect whips past the stop cruiser at high speed. 
But when he turns across the highway, the BMW becomes a hood ornament on this semi. The police quickly apprehend the criminal. And the only injuries are to the crunched up BMW that is now a heap of scrap metal. This man's crime spree included fraud, evading, and assault. So it was no surprise that his getaway car was stolen. Coming north. He thought his criminal momentum would make him unstoppable. But it also blinded him to what was right in front of his face. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. They're busting out all over. A fugitive in California comes out crashing. Oh, he ran right through that gate. A thief in Minnesota comes out slashing. Get on the ground. And a cop in Michigan comes out bashing. They're coming out in force. Get your hands up. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The most vicious criminals. Fugitives out of control. Oh, he's up on the sidewalk. He's up on the curb. And thieves out for blood. Would-be cop killers. It's an attempt murder on a federal agent. And would-be child killers. When these savages are on the loose. He's going to try and ram the vehicle. No one is safe. Los Angeles. The man driving this sport utility vehicle is bleeding and desperate. Van Nuys Boulevard, we understand there have been shots fired in this pursuit. Moments ago, federal agents tried to serve him with a warrant for fraud. But he jumped in this Jeep and tried to run them over. They opened fire, hitting him once in his arm and breaking the passenger side window. Uh, it's an attempt to murder on a federal agent. That's what he's wanted for right now. Now he leads LAPD units on a wild rush hour pursuit through the San Fernando Valley. There he is, wrong side of traffic as he approaches Woodman and Riverside Drive. The suspect knows the kind of hard federal time he's facing if he's caught. So he pushes his rugged vehicle to the limit. Oh, he's up on the sidewalk, he's up on the curb. Look at that, he's up on the sidewalk. Unbelievable. The suspect continues barreling down the sidewalk. When he gets trapped in this lot, he simply rolls over the parking curb and back into the street. And the chase is back on. The traffic forces him onto a side street. It's a dead end. This could come to an end right here. There's nowhere to go. It looks like the suspect is trapped. Then incredibly, the car exiting this parking lot activates the security gate. Unbelievable. The suspect can't believe his good luck. And he's going into the parking lot there. Within seconds, he's floored it, looking for a way out of the quickly narrowing lot. It's gonna end. You see officers in position here. He makes a U-turn. He's instantly surrounded. But he just punches the gas and somehow makes it past all of them. That was a, a, an amazing maneuver. He races back to the entrance and barely makes it through the gate just as it's closing. Now the police officers are now stuck in that call detect. A moment later, he tries it again. Another side street, another dead end, another security fence. But this time, he'll open the gate himself. Oh, he ran right through that gate, unbelievable. The suspect's vehicle becomes a 3,000 pound battering ram. And this heavy iron gate is history. LAPD knows that this is a dangerous situation. It wraps around there. The suspect is forced to turn into a tight alleyway. Straight ahead, another heavy fence. And this time, the police are waiting. We'll see what happens here. Here we go. This could terminate right in here. A cruiser pulls up to his bumper. There's no way out. He goes for it. He's going to try and ram the vehicle. He picks up speed. Look at that. Come on. He hits him. Oh, and he's stuck now. From another helicopter, we see the suspect's final desperation move. His powerful vehicle is now totally disabled. Officers now with guns drawn pointing inside the vehicle. Within seconds, officers have him in custody. They're calling for a rescue ambulance now. Because of the man's previous gunshot wound, he's rushed to the nearest hospital. 
This insane chase is finally over. Running scared, running wounded. Shots fired in this pursuit. And running wild. Unbelievable. The suspect risked everything to avoid capture. He pushed his luck. An amazing maneuver. And his vehicle passed the breaking point. Oh, he ran right through that gate. But in the end, both gave out. Hey, look at that. Come on. And now this federal fugitive is a federal prisoner. You'd think a big city detective in a homicide squad would see just about everything. But every once in a while, a crime happens that's so unthinkable that it stuns even the most seasoned officer. Phoenix, Arizona. The rough-looking thug in this parking lot is actually undercover detective Jack Ballantyne. He's pretending to be a hitman, and the people in this car have arranged to hire him. Hello. The unwitting customers are a married couple, parents. But their idea of family values is horrific. The person they want dead is their own son. Valentine has to get this despicable duo to incriminate themselves so officers can make an arrest. There were other people that they could go to. So if they weren't going to deal with me, they were finding somebody else that was going to do it. So he was going to die, whether I was going to do it or not. The woman hands Ballantyne a photo of her son and explains why they want their child slaughtered. His youthful hell-raising might get them evicted. So it's just time for the boy to go. I was disgusted. I can't grasp the thought that anybody would want to kill their child for any reason at all. None. The detective now has to negotiate the cost of killing. What's in it for me? Since the couple is strapped for cash, Valentine is forced to barter. Now, what do you think something like this is worth? Apparently, these parents don't think their child's life is worth much. All they're willing to offer is a stereo, their son's stereo. Is it any good? Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Got it. Since Valentine's act has to be believable, he can't look too eager to give in. He tells the couple that their dirty work will cost them a small fortune. I want a thousand dollars. And just to make sure these heartless parents know exactly what's at stake, Valentine spells out a graphic description of their son's murder. But, I'm not sure the but the boy's mother has a cold-blooded response. In all of the murder conspiracy cases I've done, this is probably the most amazing statement that I ever got back. It, it even almost stunned me. By now, police have heard enough. At Valentine's signal, officers move in. And just like that, the world's worst parents have been stopped in their deadly tracks. It's a crime so unthinkable it made a veteran detective shudder. So it's time for the boy to go. This callous couple wanted their own son shot and killed. Instead, they got 15 years in prison. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. You have a license? One man's silence. Go ahead and uh, mind him the drive. Leaves one officer speechless. <laughs> Next. Officers have always known they have to protect themselves against armed criminals. But times have changed, and today, some suspects are armed with things a bulletproof vest can't stop. Blaine, Minnesota. A suspicious man stuffs his shopping basket full of videotapes, as a surveillance camera records his every move. For all he knows, there's no one watching him. So he slips the videos inside his knapsack. The sticky-fingered suspect seems harmless enough as he adds some fruit to his shoplifted haul. However, this misdemeanor is about to turn into a nightmare. When police confront the thief in the parking lot, he pulls out a knife, slashing the officer's arms and even cutting up his own hands in the scuffle. It takes only minutes before the suspect is apprehended. But when the struggle is over, these policemen learn a chilling fact. This man is HIV positive. 
and each slash and stab has left these officers vulnerable to contracting a deadly virus. Put your hands behind your back. Don't you move. Stunned, they continue their job and take the knife-swinging suspect into custody. But no amount of wiping their hands clean can rid them of the potential damage that's been done. And there are no easy answers. It will take months before any of these men will know for sure what they are facing. On a fateful day, a dangerous shoplifter changed the course of these officers' lives. And as family and friends pray for their well-being, the officers face a different kind of fight. They'll endure months of tests and the pain of not knowing where they stand in the struggle against a killer disease. Police pranks are a tradition among officers because in addition to the many skills needed to do this job, there is one very serious requirement. You better be able to laugh at yourself. It's 3 p.m. in Lowndes County, Georgia. A junior officer was on his way home from a long shift until a last minute call came in. I don't work on that young man in this truck right here. I'm trying to get him to leave for the last couple hours. He won't do nothing. I don't can't talk or nothing. The officer calls his buddy over to take a look. It seems they may have trouble getting this guy to talk. Good gracious. A mime sits in the van crying. The junior officer tries to make contact. Have you ever dealt with these people before? Mine? Yeah. It soon becomes apparent that normal communication won't work here. You, know, you got your driver's license with you? Your driver's license? Do you mind? The senior officer scolds his underling. Obviously, there's only one way to communicate with a mime. You have a license? The officer gets a response, much to his partner's bewilderment. Can you step out and talk? The younger officer can't believe this is working. Stand right there for me, yeah, okay. Where are you going to? Do you understand him? No. You never dealt with these guys before? No, I mean, I know you've seen them, but you know. Well, what he's saying is he's going to a birthday party. The officer had hoped to be home by now. Instead, he's stuck in a bizarre game of charades. He decides the best way out of this is to play along. You understand him? I got the part about balloons and stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, he's going to Atlanta to a birthday party, and he forgot his balloons. And so that's why he's been crying, and that's why he just parked right here. The junior officer is trying to remember which class at the academy prepared him for this. Some of these guys can be dangerous. I, I don't know if he's one of them or not. The mime seems harmless enough, but a call to dispatch soon tells them otherwise. I've got a possible match out of Roswell. Can you give me a physical? 5'8", uh, about 180, uh, black hair and a white face. Despite the mime's hopes, they soon learn he's a fugitive. The junior officer thought he knew every face on the wanted list. Did she say wanted? It's time to take this clown in unless he can explain himself. You understand him? Did you see what he just said? No, he says something. What he's saying is that he's got a brother that looks, looks just like him, and that he's mean, uh, and he goes around laughing about it and blames it on you because y'all look just alike. The junior officer is at a complete loss for words which might come in handy as he tries to make the arrest. Well, we're going to have to arrest him. John, we're going to have to arrest you. Billy, go ahead and uh, mime him his rights. The officer isn't sure he heard correctly. Mime him his rights. He can't understand you. It's a bizarre command, but a senior officer knows best. So the trainee proceeds to say the most absurd thing anyone could ever say to a mime. You have the right to remain silent. The mime agrees, but he does have one more piece of information to share. Anything else you want to show us before you go to jail? Pictures. Movies. Movies? You got a movie of him? Where? Look right in there. 
in the white van behind you. Son, I think you've just been pranked. <laughs> what? <laughs> the junior officer is able to laugh at himself. You're a good sport, he buddy. admits he <laughs> fell for the gag completely. I've also got one crazy individual with me. <laughs> now when he goes home, he'll have a different kind of story to tell. I got to talk about balloons and stuff. A story about the prank that was worth a thousand words. <laughs> Coming up on world's wildest police videos, a vicious armed robber can only be stopped. This is where it's gonna get touchy. The hard way. Kego Harbor, Michigan. When a gunman robs a dry cleaners and hits the road, police are right behind him. Despite having three units on his tail, the hoodlum in the hatchback won't stop for anyone. But I stop him. To get this thug to cooperate, police try different tactics. From intimidation. To invoking common sense. But the renegade robber just won't listen to reason. He blows any stoplight in his path. This guy's going pretty good and wheeze through traffic like the white lines don't exist. When the suspect nears the neighboring town of Southfield, he becomes a threat to still another community. The Southfield police have to take drastic measures to stop this armed marauder. This is where it's gonna get touchy. Although an unmarked police unit tries to block the hatchback, it. the suspect makes a U-turn and slips away. Now the robber thinks his dreams of escape may come true, but reality comes crashing in. Out of nowhere, a police unit blindsides the hatchback, spinning it out in a whirl of flying debris. We got it hit, we got it hit. Police quickly move in to disarm the day's suspect. Where's the gun? Where's the gun? Without a shot being fired. This bandit thought he could hold up a dry cleaners, then make a fast getaway. This guy's going pretty good. But he didn't count on two small town PDs <laughs> with one big surprise. This vehicle is going in excess of 115 miles an hour. <laughs> For an officer, there are tough days. There are strange days. And there are just plain bad days. But if a cop has saved one life, apprehended one criminal, and made it home alive, we understand there have been shots fired in this pursuit. It's been a good day.